Judson yeah. Lester. All right. So this is going to be a relatively basic presentation about Enumerable, sort of a basic feature of Ruby. Um, I'm Judson Lester. Those are my details if you want to find me ever. Um, I work for Logical Reality Design with Evan Dorn. Is right here? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're always looking for new devs and new work. Right now, more devs than work. But so if you're if you have some spare cycles that you want to get paid for, give us a shot. Um, so that's the link to get to the documentation for Enumerable. Um, it's really complete. So I'm not sure if this talk is too basic, to be honest. Like I. Normally, we get a lot of people who are like real fresh in Ruby, um, and I don't know where we're at in this group tonight because I wasn't at least here for everyone's introduction. So, if you've been programming in Ruby for a while, I may be going with a lot of stuff in my glaze over. I'm going to try to pace it appropriately because there's more interesting stuff close to the end. Um, but in my opinion, the role is one of the best parts of Ruby. Maybe not the absolute best part, but it's really good. Um, where Ruby has a lot of sort of functional backend stuff um, and sort of a history that comes from functional programming languages, even though it's iter uh, imperative and object oriented. Um, Enumerable is where we sort of see most of that. Like, that's where we get a lot of cool stuff, including stuff from Smalltalk. Um, so, Enumerable is a module, um, it's the thing that holds all of the list operations in Ruby. So, iterations and filtering and stuff like that. The exact things we're going on. Um, it's by default included already into arrays and hashes, so when you create those with square brackets or curlies or create an array new, you have everything I'm about to talk about as part of every one of those arrays or hashes, ranges, or a couple other things. Um, just to give an example of how expressive enumerable can be, I have this crazy ass example. Um, if you have not heard of Fizzbaz, it's a kind of dumb uh, technical interview question. The idea is. This mess? Yeah. Um, you go, so the, the problem is iterate over the integers from 1 to 100, print them out one at a time. And if there are a multiple of 3, print foo. If there are a multiple of 5, print bar. And if there are a multiple of 7, print bass. Okay? And as I'm explaining that question, I'm sure you're thinking, okay, obviously we're going to use modulo. We're not going to use modulo. Uh, we're obviously going to use case or some sort of conditional. We're not going to use case or some sort of conditional. We're going to do it in one statement. There it is. That's the old dense. Don't worry too much about the one too much detail, but we're basically going to visit a lot of these concepts as we go down the, the thing. That looks horrible. Oh. Isn't it? <laughs> did you have fun writing that? Yes, I did. I had so much fun writing. This, is, this is the, like, and there's a little, you could, there's still a little optimization through at the bottom, so I haven't even left, I haven't taken all the fun out of it yet. All right, so if you do that, because it's horrible. Right? Okay. So stuff that innumerable provides for us. Um, if you've come from other languages and you've done loops like this, right? Four loops, straight up, create your index and iterate it and end when we get to the end of the array and then use the index on the array. And, and really, like, what you're trying to do is go through the array and just do something for each element of the array. Creating an index and maintaining it is not what you're doing. So there's all this code up here that's not important. And this is the Ruby version, right? There's the array. I want each of them there. <coughs> Done. No, we don't have to maintain it in the next one. Um, and part of what makes this cool is that on the back end, we're also not really maintaining the index, which we might get to talk about. Let's see about time. Um, the other thing that I do all the time with Ruby that, like, every day I do this, like, I'm just loving it a little more, is the single to list refactor, right? You have a piece of data that has a single item. Right, exactly. So we have a variable author that has a hash, right? And we're going to do something with that. We're going to print out just the name from the hash, which is easy enough, except invariably what happens is the data changes for whatever reason, right? I, I get lonely and I add someone to the list, or you're using a REST interface. I don't know anyone who's done this. You, you make REST calls out, you get JSON back, and invariably one of the fields in the dictionary changes from being a simple variable to being an array or to being a dictionary itself. They, they just decide, oh, we're going to add to this. And now you have to change all your code that was using it. But normally when you're doing lists, like you've got this code that operates on a single variable. And the idea of unwrapping that into a for loop, I, I despair. 
like every time I'm like, oh, I have to do this in a different language, I have to write a for loop and maintain the index. And if, if we're doing JavaScript, is it for in? Can I do for in for this? Is it the kind of thing that I can use for in there? Whatever. But in Ruby, you just wrap it in the each. And because you're passing the variable, so I've added two lines around, I do an extra indent, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about it again. And it doesn't matter what kind of a list type that is. I can do that with hashes as well and replace author with key value. So that's several times a day I do this kind of a thing, and it makes me happy. This is what is fun for me in Ruby. So hopefully you're somewhere on the same page as me, or I'm talking to myself. So the actual kind of tools that we get from Enumerable um, fall into a few categories. The first one we'll talk about is the filtered ones. Right? If you've been doing Ruby at all, there's find. Um, returns the first value that hits that matches the block. We're all on this page. I'm not telling anyone that anything they didn't know. Okay, then I'll try to speed up a little bit. Find all, same thing that we get an array of everything that matched. Um, drop while, a little bit less obvious, more obscure. Um, skips items that match the block. As soon as you get one that doesn't match, you get the rest of the array. One of those like can be handy sometimes. I can't hear you very well. I'm oh, sorry. I can't, I can't hear you. I, I'm sorry that you can't hear me. I'll try to speak up. Um, that what ha what's happening here is we're going to skip items in the array until as long as they match the block. As long as they match the block returns true. So you just okay. trust that all these things are implemented correctly in Ruby, or do you check these implementations? Like you could do this in C yourself. You know could, that it was right. You could do them in C yourself. You just um, trust that whoever wrote drop while the, the, the best possible implementation of that? I trust that it's implemented at the VM level. Okay. I know that Matt's Ruby puts it in the C level. Okay. So honestly, if I was going to write it in Ruby, I couldn't write it faster than what they're doing here. So I'm not trying to interrupt. Just no, no. Like, I, I don't actually use Ruby. So I don't even oh, okay. here. Yeah. No, you're fine. Um, that I could write this myself. Basically, because it's used so widely, yes. I could write my one special purpose, but I'd much rather use a well-used library because there's 100 of me, at least, thousands of me, who are using it all the time. And if it was error prone or had poor performance, someone would have complained it would be fixed. Right? But guaranteed, this kind of thing is all done at the interpreter level. And we'll get to something a little bit later on that's like, oh wow, I get all kinds of things. Take all just as the reverse, just to, we'll get to questions when we come back. Um, so take while is as long as it's true, add it to the array and you get back. Um, last one in the filters is partition. If you ever find yourself saying I want to do find all and then find all with the reverse or reject and get both of those arrays, partition does both at once. You get back in a way of match and doesn't match. Okay, so those are the filters. And there's iteration. And each, which we started off with, pretty simple. Just you pass a block in and you get each item will get passed into the block. Uh, map is for those times when you need to transform a list into another list, which is one of those kind of all the time kind of a things. So here we're just squaring, we're producing a list of the squares from the original. But again, all these examples are going to be trivial because actual practical examples are really numerous but really difficult to explain. Like, I had this giant list that came from here and what? So there are going to be these trivial examples. Um, so that's map. There's reduce, a pair of words that may resonate with some of you. Um, Reduce is a little more complicated to explain, but really powerful. Reduce is about turning a list into a single item. Right? So what's happening here, you pass a single value into reduce. That's going to go in where that says sum. And then we're going to iterate over the list and pass each one in where it says number. We're going to add the sum to the number, and the result is going to go in for the next one. Right? So the first time through, we're going to have 0 plus 1. That returns 1. 1 goes into sum. sum. So 1 plus 2, 3 goes in. 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay. Um, you can use this to do all kinds of things. One thing that's maybe not immediately obvious is you can use this to do both each and map. Right? You could pass instead of zero, you could pass an empty list, and then do whatever the transformation is and push it onto the end of the list. Right? 
It's not recommended, but it can be done. Um, so, so sort of from a computer science kind of way. It's interesting that it can be done. And in a functional recursive language, that's how you do things. But that's not actually how you want to do it most of the time here. Because reduce can lead you into a pitfall. There's actually a semi-famous example of this. And so like, to the point of there can be performance issues, it is useful to know some of them. This is not because it's badly implemented. It's a slightly different thing. It can be tempting to do something like that. right? You need to build up a hash of the squares of the numbers from 1 to 100,000 or something like that. Um, so obviously, we'll pass the hash in. We'll get hash as the arguments. Square it, set the, right, and return the hash so it can go into the next time, right? What's hidden here is each time you finish this block, you create a new hash and send it in. So if you do this, the garbage collection will eat you, like you bad for everything. And one sort of semi-notable example of this is the original version of Active Record, or Active Relation, that the new Active Record is based on, had this bug in it and had these really weird, spiky, um, problem behavior curves. There's a whole keynote speech by Aaron Patterson if you are interested. Um, and incidentally, about how to not do that, there's a different iterator that will take a single object and keep using it. So you don't have to recreate the hash each time. But, or you can always take the hash out, assign it to a variable, and send it through. But then you have to be maintaining all these other instance variables or local variables. Last category is sort of a miscellaneous toolbox of things that you don't realize you need or you can't think of a reason why you would until you run into a reason that's like, wait, what? Like each cons, right? What each cons does is you give it a number and it will group that many of the list in little windows, right? So here we're sending through pairs, but they could be in triples or four at a time. What's cons mean? Uh, I think it, it is a. It comes from. Hmm? Is it, one it's like it could be. I've always imagined it had to do like the cons cutter kind of thing, like because it's it feels like one of those weird functional programming kind of things. It could be. That actually makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> I just use each cons. It's like I used to stir talk for a long time before I realized that it was string tokenized. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, each slice is sort of related. It just, they don't overlap. It's these two and those two, and then nil to pad out the last one. Uh, cycle takes a list and iterates over it forever, hmm. right? One of those like weird kind of handy things. You even get, you even see this used in Rails. There's a, a cycle helper that you can. Any iter any enumerable, so yes, you can use ranges. How is that different than loop? Um, because loop would just repeat this, the loop over time. This is going to go run the block with one, run the block with two, run the block with three, run the block with two, run the block with three, run the block with three. Okay. Uh, zip, again, one of those like, wow, when you need it, you suddenly think it's awesome. Um, what zip does is it pairs elements from its as many arguments as it has. You can pass multiple lists into zip with elements from the original list and then passes those into the block. So what you can't see, unfortunately, over there it's number letter is get what's getting passed in. So one and A get passed in and two and B and three and C. And then star times a string is repeat the string that many times. So, so, that that so it's actually in each, so it's not a map, it just iterates. But it's, it's simultaneous in that it's going to pair them up. And it's one of those things that would be difficult to do with any of the other tools without having zip. It's worth having. Um, I think because it's sort of a zipper. Yeah, you're pairing items. Right, you're taking from the left and the right, the left and the right, the left and the right. Taking compression. Which, which makes, which is a good analogy, yeah. right? From the left to the right, left to the right, left, until you pass like three lists into zip, and now you're passing like pairing the left and the right, and the other and the other, and the left and the right and the other and the other. But mm -hmm. you understand that the two-way zip, the multi, the n-way zip, isn't that much more difficult. Justin, it sounds kind of like a DNA analogy. DNA analogy. Yeah. That's, that's the reason. Yeah, that's a reasonable approach. And I, one of the reasons that I put all, like there are a bunch more like weird miscellaneous tools in the new world, but the reason I put all these is I have used all of these at least twice 
in actual production code. Um, getting to more advanced topics is the whole idea of enumerators. Right? An enumerator is a, an enumeration, a, an iteration over a list that is saving its state, saving where it is in the enumeration. Right? So when you're going through each, you do that and it sort of disappears. Right? When, you, when you get an enumerator, you've got it and its state maintains and, and proceeds. So how you get them. Normally, like this is another way to get an iteration. It's not part of enumerable, but it serves a purpose. Any integer, you can call dot up to another integer and it'll give you an iteration from two, right? So 10, 11, 12. There should be a 12 in here. That, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Just noticing that. Um, if you call any iterator, most iterators, without a block, um, and this is one of those things where it's like, this must have been like a new thing with one nine. I think I, I started learning Ruby from the one six book, so I think that's been in one eight. So everywhere you should be able to do this most of the time. So if you've got an enumerator and you don't give it a block, right, what you get back is an enumerator, right? Okay, so you got an enumerator. Other way you can get them is to call to enum on anything that descends from object, which is anything. Um, object is the sort of the, the root class in Ruby. Well, basic object is now, but object is its only descendant, and then everything else. So you can say to it, you know, and a method, and you'll get an enumerable of calling that method repeatedly on the, the object. Um, so you kind of want that, in, that method to be something that's iterable, that returns an iteration. I'm actually not sure what will happen if you take, pass it a method that doesn't take a block. But, um, so the sort of canonical example here is you take a string, you call enum for each byte, and now you have an enumeration of each byte in the string, um, which is different than each in string because you can have multi-byte strings. But this is just an all ASCII string, this um, horrible Western person. So features of enumerators. Why, why do we care? Why do we want them? First of all, they're all enumerable, which maybe is obvious, but so anytime you've got an enum, you can pass it around and call each map, find all those things on it. Um, so this means you can call find all on anything that is iterable. Right? So you could say 10 up to 100, find the ones that are multiples of 5, or something like that. Um, you also get some extra methods out of the enumerable. Um, next being the most interesting one. Um, and the really sort of deep magic is in next. So every time you call next, you get the next value that would be returned by the enumerator. Um, you also get with index and with object. With index goes add, returns a new enumerator that adds an index to the things that are being yielded into the block. And with object, you just give whatever object you want, and that will get yielded in as well. This works a lot like each with it object. Um, there's also an each with index. Yes, yes there is. There, there is. There you go. Um, enumerators are really a specialized tool. Like, as much as the sort of oddball tools are, like uh, sometimes you need them. Thinking about enumerators is one of those things most of the time you can kind of forget about until one day you come up with this sort of a gnarly list handling problem that knowing that they exist is really helpful. So don't worry about going out right now and finding an application for enumerators because it's mostly a knowing where it is. One of them is for decomposition, that you can have a method that takes a list and rather than write a new version of that method that you know, does it reverse or with indexes, you can pass in an enumerator instead and generate enumerators to use that method. And sort of related to that is the idea of chaining them um, that you can do this craziness where we're saying each cons within that map, and this one's fun to puzzle out. <laughs> right, so we're taking from a string, we're taking each con, so each consecutive three, adding an index to it, mapping that to the character out of that list that is the modulo of three of the index. So we're taking each group of three and picking one of them based on where we are in the list. And the result is that weird sort of slightly tangled version. Not a practical example, <laughs> but at least demonstrates that you can do that kind of crazy mapping stuff that you, you know, chaining of enumeration. 
of enum yeah, enumerators that might not otherwise be obvious. Okay, so a couple of examples to bring this thing in, I hope. One is a Rails example. We imagine that there's a, a visited by scope that returns uh, the, a list of locations that a user has been in in date consecutive order. We can take each cons to and now have basically their whole travel itinerary. Pass that into a view and say it went from LAX to Seattle, from Seattle to Moscow, from Moscow to New York, New York back to LA, LAX. And here are the, the distance traveled for each leg of that trip, for instance. Um, there's also a couple of grouping methods that don't make sense without understanding enumerators. Um, chunk groups consecutive values for which the block returns the same value. Does that make sense? Okay, so we get back a list of all the users and they're, I'm just saying, they're, in sort, they're sorted by name order, right? The block says take the first character of their name, right? That's what we're going to group them by. So take the first user, create a new list for them, Keep adding people to that list so long as they all have the same first initial. As soon as there's someone with a different first initial, new list, keep adding to that. Um, this, this example works because they're sorted, but there's a lot of applications where you can do that kind of chunking uh, for lists that, don't, that aren't well sorted. Right? You want to know, might want to know like consecutive even integers, for instance. Um, so why wouldn't you use a select or something like that here? Because it makes a bad example for this talk. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, yes, totally use a select. Okay. If you actually have a database behind this, right. yes, use a select. Um, but it's often because like, you get lists of data that aren't necessarily databases. Or because it's coming from Mongo <laughs> and the tools aren't as good. Um, slice before is buried there. Um, this is the most practical example in the whole I don't know if you guys use show off at all. A show, the slice for show off or a big markdown file separated by this bang slide, right? So this code opens up a slides file and then slice before each bang slide, which is the same kind of idea. We're going to group it into sublists, but the, tr the trigger for starting a new sublist is that this block is returns true, right? So Whenever, it's a, whenever we get a line that starts bang slide, that's a new slide, start a new list for it. And then move out of them. Why are we out of them? I'm not sure. But, and then coming back, sort of full circle, there's this thing again, which hopefully makes a little bit more sense, right? Like, so we've got a range, 1 to 110, because those are uh, enumerable, we can iterate over them. We can call zip on that. Now we have three more ranges from negative 2 to 0, called we get cycle, so we have three enumerators that are going to cycle from a negative number to zero repeatedly. We're going to map that group and get four values out of it, the original number and each of the cycles. And I'm naming those cycles now foobar and bass. Mm -hmm. right? We're mapping them into a list that starts with the number and adding to it, zipping, this is the, uh, one of my favorite th features of Ruby that doesn't really fit in this talk. Um, it is the literal, uh, code for a, an array of strings separated by white space. So this is exactly equivalent to the array, the string foo, the string bar, the string pass. We're zipping that with the values from up there, right, which are some number, maybe zero, and mapping that to the string and what's possibly zero. If zero is zero, then the thing. And what's going to happen is every third one, foo is going to be zero. Every fifth one, bar is going to be zero, and every seventh one, baz is going to be zero. So if it's zero, then thing, otherwise nil. Um, compact is an array method that strips out nils. We're going to take all of those arrays, map them through join, and then map them again, map the ending array through join again, and puts the whole thing. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, while this is sort of impenetrable up front, Building this thing, kind of thing, up is much easier. Like you can, because it's all a set of little compositions. So, again, I wouldn't put this in production code because who the fucking tell what it needs? But 
I liked doing it, and it was fun, and it's fun to show off a little bit. Um, last part here, the, the advanced enumerable section of the course. Um, all of that has been using enumerable. I, I have a thing that's a list, and, you know, so I can use enumerable things on it, but I'd like to use it on my stuff. It's not limited to array and hash. There's a lot of things that use it. Active model uses it, Nokagiri, which is the HTML parser, lets you iterate through nodes by using a XPath. Active Record uses it. SQL, which inspired a lot of new features in Active Record. Celluloid, which is an actor model thing, so all these little parts of your program are talking to each other and sending messages into their mailboxes. They go through their mailbox by iterating using a new model. Um, the Git gem for Ruby uses enumerable on things like ref logs and commit messages and things like that. Um, lots of gems use enumerable sort of in the back end without exposing it to the outside world. So enumerable is well used in the world at large by lots of people whose names you probably would recognize. But not necessarily like list-like things. It's any sequential data, as we will see. Here's our example, right? The Fibonacci series as an object, or as a class. Um, so far, this is the entire code we've got set up. We're all familiar with the Fibonacci series. Start with one and one, add, right? Okay. So what is what we're going to do? We're going to define an each method. Each is going to yield values to its caller. Right? We're following yielding in blocks. That's why the this is the advanced part of the course. So when you get each, you would normally pass a block into each if you were doing an array or something. The way you get values into that block is by calling yield. Right? So we yield the current value of the, the this attribute. Then we do a multiple assignment to get to change the, this into next, and next is the sum of this and next. We go on one line, so we get a four line each method. Next step, we include enumerable. That's it. Now we can create a new uh, Fibonacci series. Let's say take 15 of it, which is just the 15, first 15 items in the, the list. So there's the first 15 Fibonacci series. Um, and this will never return because the Fibonacci series doesn't, right? Um, but the important thing there is you wouldn't want to actually like directly translate that to an array because it would take a little more time. Right? But you've got a, a set of sequential data that you can treat as if it was an array so long as you don't try to instantiate all of it all at once. Um, a lot of time you do want to have something that's sort of array backed or hash back or something like that. But it, you know, don't do this because just use an array. But if there was some extra metadata or something that made it make sense to have an array like this, it's really easy to just forward the, the each yield to the array, include enumerable in there, and you've got your own enumerable that can do a variety of things. Um, quick note in sorting if you're going to do that. Uh, the elements of the thing have to define the spaceship operator. Quick example of what that looks like. Um, so you can do operator definitions in Ruby. It's just a method definition. And the assumption is that I'm the left-hand side and your other is the right-hand side. Um, spaceship returns negative one if less than would be true, positive one if greater than would be true, and zero if neither is true. Once you, if you have defined this on all of the elements in your list, not the list itself, obviously, um, then you get these four methods automatically. You can sort the list without having to pass a block to do it. You can find the minimum and maximum value, and min-max is both together as a list. Um, and most of the time you don't have to define it already because numbers, strings, symbols, all mm -hmm. those things already have a spaceship. Um, the examples, the, that crazy ass FizzBaz thing plus the, Fibonacci, the full implementation of Fibonacci series is there in this gist, if anyone cares. And that's it. Any questions? Right. I have one. Yeah. Um, so I noticed that the arguments that are yielded in each are uh -huh. different for arrays and hashes, right? For the array is just the value, and with right. hashes it's the key and the value. Right. But they're both just mixing in enumerable. So how does enumerable know they so, treat one differently than the other? So what happens is, um, The quick find this. 
talking about the Fibonacci series thing. All right, so when I say yield this, the, the underlying list thing can yield as many things into that as they want. The semantics of blocks in Ruby is that it's as if, if you use multiple variables in a, in a method, it's as if the last one has star on it already. So hashes yield key and value in each. Um, and so if you have a, if you do each, if you, the back block you pass to each, if you take a single value, it'll get the key and the value as an array. If you pass two variables and you say each do key value, then key and value get assigned it individually. Right? That's the multiple assignment in Ruby that maybe deserves a lightning talk, but not a full presentation. Hmm. Any other questions? The question that I always have with using a new is, I mean, obviously you do really cool stuff and compress what you know, might be dozens of lines of code down into three or four lines of code. But right. The problem I always run into is that it ends up being incredibly obtuse and you show it to somebody and they're like, wow, I have no idea what the fuck your code does. Well, and it seems to lend itself to extremely <laughs> difficult to understand code for somebody who's new to a code base. There's, so. there's that possibility, certainly. Like, yeah. the, that FizzBuzz is part of the, the reason that example exists is because it's easy to go overboard and say this is crazy awesome, but it's obtuse, it's hard to follow. But most examples with enumerable aren't like that. And the reality is, if you're actually writing code to be expressive, um, my experience is that when I found myself writing stuff with the, that are iterations and loops and things like that using an immutable and, and its features, if I were to translate that into non-immutable or like to limit myself to using each and map or something, um, the result is code that's even harder to understand because it's spread out over like 12 pages or something, or through seven methods or something. Um, The other half of my answer to that is, that's why I did this presentation. Because I feel like this is core Ruby. Yeah. And if you're a Ruby programmer, you should know these things. So it should be comprehensible. If you know what those things do, then that should be the test of the code, right? Like, if I can write it, and you know these things and can understand it, great. If you know these things and don't get it, then that's my fault. I should have done something different. So this is not a silver bullet. It will always make your code clearer, but it often will. I'd like to know who's responsible for each cause. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a whole... Get blamed. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> that one goes way back. I think that's back in the subversion days. Um, I actually had a whole section here on like the background on some, like how it comes from small talk and stuff like that. There's like five methods that have these rhyming, or collect, inject, reject, select, Detect, yeah. which are in fact find, find all, map, reduce, and map with the opposite block is reject, or find all, yeah. Those all come from Smalltalk. Smalltalk names all of its equivalent things with these like, cute rhyming names, and whenever I run across them in code, I'm like, you, yeah, yeah, why? Yeah. Which, you know. You find them a lot in like the rake code and stuff like that. A lot of like old school Ruby code was written with this yeah. stuff that was designed to sort of draw in small talk programmers because they needed to be sold on a new programming language. I don't know. So, yeah, I have no idea who's responsible for each cons. That I guess it's better than each consecutive. That would have been lengthy to type a lot. <laughs> so numerals make you happy. Yes, they do. Excellent. Yes. I like having this sort of expression in the language. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the really, the perverse thing for me is I wrote this whole Fibonacci thing like to make sure that my recollections were accurate and got this all right the first time, which was nice. Where this kind of looping and stuff would get really complicated without these um, features. Okay. Just make sure I've got the right index and things would get to be a pain.
and certainly I wouldn't want to have to actually write, you know, I just want the first 15 of them. And that's I'm handled. I didn't have to do anything else than that. So there's a bunch of stuff that's just, it's nice, and it's worth the practice. This one returns. I guess that's the, the message. The moral of this presentation is innumerable returns the effort that you put into learning it. Manifold. So, thanks.